Do you know how half-cut cells work in shaded conditions? As the photovoltaic industry develops, new and exciting technology is introduced. One of the developments that has seen a recent increase in market share are half-cut cell modules. These modules make use of namesake cells that are cut in half to improve performance and durability. Half-cut cell modules have quite a few advantages over their standard 60 and 72 cell counterparts. A commonly touted advantage is their superior performance when shaded. However, there are extra design and installation considerations that will need to be taken into account to ensure that the technology is best utilized. In this video, we will explore how half-cut cell modules operate in different shaded conditions and how they compare to standard PV modules. Let's say you have the following simplified 360 watt 60 cell module installed in a portrait orientation. During the day, this section of the panel experiences some unavoidable shading. Bypass diodes within the module allow for the current to be routed away from the individual cells in this substring, protecting it from hot spotting while also lowering the panel's output to two thirds of its rated capacity, 240 watts. Now let's look at a simplified 360 watt 120 cell module, again in portrait orientation, with the same shading scenario. Half-cut cells are configured in such a way that there are six substrings, with the cells in each half connected in series, and then each half is connected in parallel. The three bypass diodes are situated between each pair of substrings. So under these conditions, what do you think the output of this half-cut cell module will be? Hit pause if you want to give yourself more time to do the calculations, otherwise the answer is coming up in 3, 2, 1, 240 watts. This answer may or may not have come as a surprise to you. Let's have a closer look at what happens to half-cut cells in different shading scenarios and how to make the most out of the technology. Let's first look at the voltages. In the shaded string, the bypass diode is activated with a voltage drop of approximately 0.6 volts. The second and third substring will see 12 volts each. This comes to a total of 23.4 volts across the entire module. Now let's look at the current. For this half cut module, we're going to assume that each substring has a maximum 5 amps of current that can pass through it. In this case, 10 amps will be first diverted through the bypass diode in the shaded section. The current then splits to 5 amps through each unshaded substring, maintaining the total of 10 amps throughout the entire module. This means an output of 23.4 volts times 10 amps equaling 234 watts. Comparing the IV and power curve of both a standard cell module and a half-cut cell module, we can see that the maximum power output is the same. So, what's the difference between half-cut and standard cell modules? You probably have noticed that the half-cut cell has two maximum power peaks, or MPP, in its power curve a local maximum and a global maximum. This second peak, a local maximum in this case, comes about by operating at a lower current while maintaining a relatively higher voltage in the unshaded substrings rather than activating the bypass diodes. This is an option that is available to half-cut cells due to the parallel configuration of the two halves and is in fact where half-cut modules have the potential advantage over standard modules in shaded conditions. An inverter with global MPPT functionality will perform periodical sweeps across its range of current and voltage levels. This is done in order to avoid getting stuck at local maximum power points. The periodicity of these sweeps will depend on the manufacturer of the inverter and will result in some loss of power during the process. However, the trade-off is the assurance that the inverter will always seek out and operate at the globally maximum power point. Let's have a closer look at what happens with the current and voltages in a more severe case of shading. This time, two thirds of the bottom half of the module is covered. Note that even if the substring within the module is partially shaded, for example by a leaf or by cloud cover, it will be to the same effect as if the entire string has been shaded. In a standard cell, two bypass diodes will be activated, 
with a total voltage drop of 1.2 volts. With 12 volts in the unshaded string, there will be a total of 10.8 volts across the whole module. 10 amps of current will be produced by the unshaded string, and this equates to a power output of approximately one third of the module's rated power, with 10 amps times 10.8 volts equaling 108 watts. For a half cut cell, the first MPP is similar to the standard cell. 10 amps will flow through the module, through the bypass diodes, and then splitting into 5 amps in both sides of the unshaded string. Accounting for a voltage drop of 0.6 volts per activated diode, the module will have 10.8 volts. At this power point, the module will be operating at 10 amps times 10.8 volts, equaling 108 watts of power. The second maximum power point occurs at a lower current but a higher voltage. 5 amps of current will flow through the top two halves of the shaded strings instead of through the bypass diodes, splitting into 2.5 amps in both sides of the unshaded string. The voltage is maintained at 12 volts across each of the three strings for a total of 36 volts. This means that the output of the panel is approximately half of its rated power at 5 amps times 36 volts equaling 180 watts. Looking at the IV and power curves for a simulated half cart module, we can again see the two maximum power points, a local maximum and a global maximum. In this case, the difference between the two peaks is more substantial, where running at a high current and a lower voltage is less beneficial than operating at a low current and higher voltage. As an inverter makes a full sweep of the operating range, it will be able to identify the global maximum power point. Overlaying the curves for the standard module, we can see that there is only one maximum power point, indicating an output that is approximately one third of its rated power. Let's examine one more example, where the shading has spanned across the lower bottom half of the module. Again, partial shading on a single string is equivalent to the entire string being shaded. It's no surprise that a standard module will be outputting zero watts in this scenario, with all the current being diverted through the bypass diode. However, in a half cut module, 5 amps can still flow through each substring of the unshaded half. The voltage is 12 volts at each string, to a total of 36 volts. This provides a power output of 5 amps times 36 volts, equaling 180 watts, 50% of the module's rated power. Looking at the IV and power curves for both module types, show that the half-cut cell can operate even when experiencing heavily shaded conditions. So far, we've only looked at how a single module operates in shaded conditions. In a real-world scenario, we come across the complication that most inverters can only track the MPP of an entire string of modules rather than the MPP of each module individually. Let's look at a string of the same half-cut cell modules that we've been unpacking. In a scenario where you have nine unshaded modules connected to this half-shaded one, the inverter will find the MPP of the whole string to be at 10 amps, forcing the shaded module's bypass diodes to operate and adding nothing to the string voltage with no extra power being generated from that module. This behaves much like a full cell module would. The half-cut cell's module shading benefits are only realized if all modules in the string are similarly shaded, or if module level MPPTs are used, such as DC optimizers and microinverters. There are some clear advantages to half cut cells, such as reduced resistive losses and reduced hot spotting impacts. However, a portrait install is necessary to make use of the advantages a half cut cell provides in shaded conditions. Ideally, you would orient the array so that the shading occurs in the lower half of any given row of modules. Certain sites may not always have the room for a portrait install, and depending on the orientation of the site, the shading conditions and additional installation considerations may not warrant the increased costs that come with half-cut cell modules. If a site does not experience heavy shading conditions, there may not be much difference in the shaded performance between half-cut and standard modules. All of these considerations also need to be weighed up against the advantages that half-cut cells provide and now you're better equipped to take advantage of them. 
This video was brought to you by Global Sustainable Energy Solutions, experts in renewable solar energy and creating sustainable change since 1998. For more information about our services, such as design, consulting, training, and publications, click on the link in the description or visit gses.com.au.